This is a big one, so let's get straight into it and book a tour from scratch. We're going to use Great Britain as an example because it's small, easy to picture, and doesn't require any international flights, but this information can be applied to any country or state. I'm also going to use a four-piece rock band as an example because it's easy, but again, this can apply to soloists or any other type of act as well. Let's start with booking agents. Booking agents are people who make money from booking gigs. When you hire a booking agent, you're paying for their connections, knowledge and experience in a particular country or region. Booking agents might charge you an upfront fee, or a per gig fee, or both, and they might have venues that pay them to book talent. I've hired booking agents a few times, and I've had mixed experiences. One guy ran a promotions company as well, and he booked a two-week Australian tour for one of my bands. Uh, we paid him a percentage of the ticket sales for our shows, and he was worth every dollar we paid him. The last agent I hired enlisted an intern who booked us a series of progressively worse UK gigs, which cost us hundreds of pounds in transport, fuel and accommodation, as well as years worth of painstakingly accrued spirit. Booking agents can make or break your tour, so do your research thoroughly before hiring one. Alternatively, you can book your tour yourself. Choose your dates. You probably work a job or two, and you probably need to book time off work in advance. Talk to your bandmates or whoever else is going on tour and decide when the optimum time to tour would be. Ideally, you're touring to promote a release. When you've decided, all schedule your time off work together. Remember to take your audience into consideration when you choose your dates. Is your audience predominantly 25 to 35 year olds? Well, they might have young children and might be away during the school holidays and therefore won't be around to attend your gig if you play at that time. Are they high school students? Well, maybe don't play on a school night. Things like public holidays are generally not a great time to tour, unless you are well known or you have something really big planned. Weekend or week long? Many bands choose to tour on consecutive weekends rather than spending a week or two on the road. This means that you can take less time off work and play more of the venues on popular nights of the week, Thursday, Friday and Saturday. The problem with weekend tours is that you often have to do more driving overall to return home at the end of each weekend. If you're renting transport, multiple short-term rentals can cost more than one long-term rental. There's no right or wrong way here, you just have to figure out what works best for you. Equipment. Hopefully you can find venues with a PA system so you don't have to take your own or hire one. What else you have to take will depend on the venue and the other acts you're playing with. It's common for venues to have a house drum kit or house amps, uh, but the condition is often poor due to overuse and beer spillage. If you're comfortable using house gear, you can just take the basics on tour, leaving the drum kit and amps at home. Alternatively, you could ask the local acts to borrow their gear on the night, but again, this is at your own risk. In either situation, you need to take what we call the breakables. Now, the breakables are things like kick pedal, snare drum, cymbals, drumsticks, guitars, and keyboards. It can also be helpful to take your own vocal mic if you're a singer. This way, you don't have to share the house mic with the spit of a thousand other singers. Transport. Do you or one of your bandmates own a reliable vehicle that can fit all of your gear? If not, then you need to borrow or hire a van or a vehicle that can fit what you need. Hiring transportation can be great because if you ever break down, you're covered and no one has to sacrifice their own vehicle, but it can get expensive. You also need to budget fuel costs when you're driving, so find an online fuel cost calculator and you know, determine how much it might cost by entering your vehicle, your route and the price of fuel. Remember that you can tour in a car if that car can tow a trailer. Trailer hire can be much cheaper than van hire, just make sure it's a solid enclosed trailer. Now you need to plan which cities to visit. Obviously aim for major centres where there are lots of people, but also look at towns along the way, places you could use to break up the trip if it's a long journey between major cities. A great way to start planning is by looking at recently completed tours by acts similar to you. Do you see the same cities and venues popping up? Does everyone play Newcastle, for instance, but no one ever plays Blackpool? There's probably a reason. 
Your hypothetical band is London based, so to start with in Great Britain, we're going to aim for all of the major cities. London, Birmingham, Sheffield, Leeds, Manchester, Liverpool, Glasgow, Edinburgh, Leicester, Bristol. Since you're a rock band, you could also target a city like Brighton for its renowned live scene, and cities like Oxford and Cambridge due to their student populations. With those, that's 13 stops on your tour already, almost a gig a night for two weeks. Can you handle that? Can your singer? Do you need to visit them all? Let's take a look at where your fans are. Find your fans. Most of your fans are probably local, so you need to find if you have fans anywhere else. It's important to play to new audiences, but having a few fans in the room always makes for a better gig. Look at the analytics of your social media accounts and your websites to determine where else your fans live. Also, put a post on social media about your upcoming tour and ask your fans where they think you should play. Hopefully you'll get a list of cities and maybe even venues to try and book. Route. It's around now you should begin to see a rough idea of where you can play. You've decided to do the whole tour at once, but you're going to skip Leicester and Cambridge as you've got no fans there and you haven't noticed any other rock bands playing there. That leaves you with 11 stops. You're driving, so you want to be as economical as possible with your travel time between cities. So here's what your dates and your route might look like. That's nearly 2,000 kilometers and 24 hours of driving over 13 days. I hope you've got more than one driver. Venues. Make a list of venues in these cities that put on gigs. Use other bands tours as a template, adding all the venues you can find that have hosted rock gigs in the last year. Does every touring band seem to play the Crown and Anchor in Liverpool? It's probably because they have a good PA system, they pay well, or they attract a regular crowd. There's the first spot on your list for that city. Compile your list of venues with names and email addresses and start getting in touch, asking about the specific date that you want or any other possible dates that they could accommodate you. Something like this. Find out which venues are available for your dates and book your tour. Make a spreadsheet so you know where you need to be and when, including any other relevant information like venue details, uh, cell numbers, sound check times and accommodation. Accommodation. Unless you're making a ton of money already or you have wealthy friends or family, you're probably not going to be staying in hotels. My first question when I've booked a venue is, do you have any accommodation? Sometimes venues will have an apartment or a room where they'll let acts sleep for free or for a small fee. If they don't have anywhere, ask if they can recommend somewhere close to the venue. You're looking at hostels, B&Bs and motels. If you're on a really low budget, consider asking friends or fans in that city if you can stay with them. A final option is to ask the other acts you are playing with if they have anywhere that you can sleep. Other acts. Depending on your situation, you might either be put on a lineup by a promoter or charged with creating a lineup for yourself. The latter option is the harder one, but it can reap huge rewards. Here is your chance to play to the crowds of the best bands in that city. See who is playing regular shows in the area, get in touch and ask them to play on your lineup. Always aim for acts that have comparable or higher popularity than you to give your show the best chance of success. And don't be afraid of giving up the headlining slot. It's usually worse to play last anyway. Promotion. You can ask how each venue and local acts plan to promote the show, what they can offer, and then you do the rest. Make posters and flyers and send them to the venues and the local acts and ask them to distribute it around town. Make a tour poster and plaster it everywhere. Create a Facebook event for each show. List each show on all local and national gig guides. Call local radio stations to get on their gig guide and ask them if they can play a song or maybe even do an interview before the gig. 
The last thing to do is take a look at your schedule and identify your weak points. You're playing Sheffield, Leeds, Manchester and Birmingham on either a Tuesday or a Wednesday night, which aren't typically big nights for live music. You'll need to focus extra promotional attention in these cities on those dates. Put it all together and you've just booked a tour. Now go. Thank you for watching. Please let me know what you'd like the next video to be about in the comments, hit subscribe and head to the Musicians Map Facebook group to discuss your musical journey. Also, head to musiciansmap.org to check out my ebook and audiobook on growing success in music, as well as a ton more free content and information.